this video I'll be talking about the 15 most valuable things I've learned from doing a little bit of research on Qbeats, listening to their loops, and also I listened to one of the only interviews and podcasts they've ever done. I want to be in that range of around 130 and 140 BPM for Qbeats loops. For the sounds you want to be using VSTs like Omnisphere and Nexus. In the podcast they didn't specifically mention that they use these VSTs but they kind of imply that they do. Or you could also be using VSTs like Sakura from FL Studio or Contact and UVI Workstation which is pretty similar to Contact. One thing Qubits loops have in common is that they have very recognizable rhythms. So instead of just playing the melodies more lyrically, you want to play them more rhythmically. So when it comes to melodies, you want to be using a minor scale, harmonic minor scale, melodic minor scale, or any type of mode. And your melody should be based around the three minor chords. So in the natural minor scale, you have three minor chords, three major chords, and one diminished chord. If you start on the tonic of a minor scale and then you pitch it up or down by five, you're going to end up with all of the chords you can use within that scale. So first, I'm just going to pitch it up by five and I'm going to end up with D minor. And if I pitch it down by five, I'm going to end up with E minor. And all of these chords are within the A minor scale. This is the reason why pitching your chord up or down by five semitones always works. When it comes to making melodies for Qubits, you want to be basing your melodies around these chords. And of course, you can use major chords, but if you use too many of them, it's probably going to sound a little bit too happy. This is the melody I came up with. It's pretty simple, but you do have this somewhat catchy and also rhythmic melody. mostly based on these minor chords. And like I said, you can use some of the major chords. Qubits uses a lot of vocal chops in their loops. And if you want to make your own vocal chops, I recommend for a recording that you add a low cut and add a fruity limiter, set it to compressor, turn the gain all the way down and adjust the threshold accordingly to your input level. This will help you get rid of the hiss and background noises. And when you've got a tech that you like, you can always route it to a new mixer channel and add a bunch of effects like reverb, echo boy, which is basically delay and decimort. And sometimes I like to pitch them up by one octave. But I didn't use any vocals for this loop. One thing I noticed is that they always have one element adding a lot of movement to the loop. So for example, you could be adding a pad and by adding a sidechain effect or a trimming effect, you can add a lot of movement. Or sometimes they also like to use arpeggios and that kind of stuff. And one way to add a little bit more bounce to your melodies is by adding a delay and messing around with it. It might occasionally work, but you don't want to overdo it. And I feel like the most important thing that makes these loops so compelling is that they kind of sound like something a human wouldn't come up with. And one way to add this feeling to your loops is to chop them up because it's never going to sound like anything any musician would ever play using a real instrument. The easiest way is to just open free slicer, just the attack, and depending on your preferences, you can have a slow attack or a fast attack. And of course, you want to set it up beats. And if you want to, you can also pitch up or down your melodies. So this is what the melody sounds like after chopping it up. It sounds completely different. Of course, sometimes I like to add gross beat. All you have to do is go to momentary, click on the half speed. And of course, you want to be detuning your melodies. The one way to do it, if you want to do it with a plugin, is to use Mono Mode. All you have to do is to turn off these two buttons and set sync to auto and set it at 0.5. I always keep the mix pretty low, but if you want to go a little bit more extreme, go for it. Another way to do it is to use RC20 or Reels. You can also use to Vinyl, which is completely free. If you want to achieve this detune effect with guitar pedals, you might want to have a look at Fairfield Shallow Water or Warped Vinyl by Chase Bliss. And I'm not quite sure whether or not this is true, but I heard that Palace uses the same gear as Qbeats. And I talked about this in my last video, and one of my subscribers 
actually listed all of the equipment. So check out this list if you're into analog gear. So the next couple of points are all from that Qubit interview. And the first one is somewhat business related. And they talked about how they diversify. So they don't only make loops and they don't only send out beats. They also make music for ads. They even have their own label and they signed a couple of musicians and artists. So you definitely want to be diversifying because this will allow you to have multiple income sources. And if one dries out, you still have a bunch of different ones to rely on. So the next one is actually a piece of gear that I can confirm that they use. And it's the Motive Rack by Yamaha. I believe it was Tim that talked about it and he said it was the only piece of analog gear that he uses. Also keep in mind that this interviewer is seven years old, so a lot might have changed in their studio setup. The last thing I want to talk about is that they love to use live recordings and to later on use these recordings to chop them up and to create their own loops. These were the 15 most important things that I've learned from U beats and if you want to watch a similar video i did one on palace and also if you learned anything please space boost that like button and if there's another producer you'd like me to make a video about please let me know in the comments below